Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. The most incendiary claim in the Steele dossier was, of course, that a foreign adversary, Russia, has dirt on the president of the United States exposing the president to blackmail. Now it turns out there was a whole vault full of dirt on Donald J. Trump, though not in Russia, right here in the U.S. We don't know all of its contents. We don't know who's seen them or who could be holding that dirt as leverage over the current U.S. president. But we do know, according to the New York Times, the president wanted to get his hands on all of it. In 2016, according to the Times, the president and his then lawyer, Michael Cohen, hatched a plan to buy an entire trove of damaging Trump stories collected by the National Enquirer and its parent company all the way back to the 1980s. That whole trove of stories was reportedly kept in a safe by the Enquirer's publisher, David Pecker, as the Associated Press first reported last week. Now, this goes well beyond the president's documented efforts before the election to cover up his alleged affairs with Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. Cohen, you'll remember, pleaded guilty to related campaign finance violations, federal felonies, last week. And he testified under oath in that plea that he broke the law at the president's direction. It's the first we're learning of what was reportedly a broader effort to hide negative stories about the president from American voters at the absolute height of the campaign. And it sheds new light on that secret audio tape of Cohen and the president that was made public last month, which seemed to have something to do with the hush money pay payment to Karen McDougal. Now it's clear Cohen and the president were talking about buying up the whole vault of Trump dirt, all of it from David Pecker, referred to as our friend David. I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David, you know, so that I'm going to do that right away. I've actually come up and I've spoken to me and I've spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we gonna funding. That, uh, yes, um, and it's all the stuff, all the stuff, because, you know, you never know where that company, you never know where he's going to be. Correct. So I'm, I'm all over that. It's all the stuff, Cohen says, all the stuff that Pecker is said to have buried during the campaign and in years before. The Times reporting that in 2016, Pecker kept his staff from going back through the old Trump tip and story files that dated to before he became company chairman in 1999. The president's concern, as he says of Pecker on that tape, maybe he gets hit by a truck. Both Pecker and the other person mentioned on the tape, Trump Organization CFO Alan Weisselberg, have been granted some degree of immunity by federal prosecutors in New York in order to compel their testimony in their investigation. And we don't know exactly what kind of dirt the National Enquirer may have collected over the president's many years as a tabloid fixture. According to the Times, the Trump vault mostly holds old stories about his marital woes and lawsuits, Rumors like the claim he cheats at golf and tips about extramarital affairs. Just last week, CNN published a contract between AMI, that's the Inquirer's parent company, and a former Trump doorman signed early in the campaign buying the rights to, and I quote it, information regarding Donald Trump's illegitimate child. The claim that the president fathered a child out of wedlock has not been substantiated. According to the Times, the president never went through with his plan to buy the contents of David Pecker's safe. And now we don't know where all that Trump dirt ended up. AP reported last week it was removed from the safe in the weeks before the president's inauguration. But it was unclear whether the documents were destroyed or simply moved to a more secret location. We do know, however, however, prosecutors in the Cohen case subpoenaed records from both the Inquirer and its parent company, AMI, a fact they revealed in open court last week. And... And this is important. According to the New York Times, their investigation did not end with Cohen's guilty plea. To help understand the president's relationship to the Inquirer and the implications of his exposure to blackmail, I'm joined by Pulitzer Prize-winning investigative reporter and Trump biographer David K. Johnson, author of It's Even Worse Than You Think, What the Trump Administration is Doing in America, and MSNBC contributor Natasha Bertrand, staff writer for The Atlantic. David, I'll start with you as someone who covered uh, the president for decades in his previous, uh, previous life. He, he was always sort of inextricably bound up with the tabloid press in sending secrets about his foes and keeping his own secrets out of the paper. Oh, yes. Donald was Mr. Fake News, and much of his uh, persona is based on fake news. 
And he also, uh, as he himself has said, has gotten politicians to do his bidding, uh, have done favors for him. There's everything from the mystery of the missing Manhattan sewage, 24 million gallons a day when he needed that for a deal, uh, to the mysterious transfer of his friend and, and uh, helicopter provider, uh, Joe Wexelbaum's drug case from Ohio to the courtroom of his sister, uh, federal judge Marianne Trump Barry. So, uh, Natasha, the thing that I wonder about here is blackmail is at the center of the Steele dossier. It's at the center of the investigations that happen when people apply for security clearance because it is viewed as a security threat. And what is revealed in the New York Times story is that the idea of that is not at all far fetched. And in fact, it already exists. Right. And the idea is that this is potentially the most blackmailable president in United States history. I mean, the fact that the National Enquirer had decades of information about his affairs, about his children, about even Melania, speaks volumes about the president's life and all of the kind of shady things he did throughout his career, many of which, most of which, perhaps all of which he actually never even faced real consequences for. But I think that this substantiates two big claims in the dossier. The first, of course, is that Michael Cohen was the president's fixer in all things related to Russia. So just as he was the fixer in all things related to burying stories about Trump's uh, extramar extramarital affairs, he was also, according to the dossier, his fixer in burying the story of the Trump's uh, the Trump campaign's conspiracy with Russia to win the election. He was alleged to have paid off the hackers and to kind of clean the whole thing up at the end of the election. The other thing that we've learned from this story unfolding is that Trump actually is a little bit more skittish about his extramarital affairs becoming public than many of us have been led to believe. That so is there's a great always point. so there's always been this theory that perhaps the president really wouldn't care if news came out that prostitutes peed on a bed in Moscow um, because he hated. Uh, President Obama and he wanted to defile the bed that he slept in. And no one was really sure whether or not his base would care. But now we know that Trump has gone to great lengths to hide these details about his personal life. And that really makes you wonder that if those salacious details in the dossier are true, then what lengths has the president gone to in order to keep the Russians from exposing that as well? Let me just note that Lanny Davis, who is a sort of spokesperson for Michael Cohen, has denied that Michael Cohen went to Prague to clean things up, as is alleged in that dossier. I want to just put that on the record because he's been pretty strenuous on that. Um, so that 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 is the, the, the current position of Cohen's spokesperson. But, but David, that, that point about Natasha, I think, is a really good one. There is this sense that mm -hmm. here's a guy where all this stuff is, is, is priced in, okay? He's been the public eye. He had some of the most famous extramarital affairs in New York history. As a 13 or 14-year-old, I knew all about his mar marital life uh, growing up in New York City. He's on the front page of the tabloids. But this does show the lengths to which they were willing to go to suppress stuff and how, for whatever reason, embarrassed or intent on keeping secrets they were. Well, let's remember that Donald uh, actively pursued the wives of a number of people he did business with, would invite women to his office and then get their husbands on the phone to talk about their dalliances as part of his uh, rather unusual seduction technique. And some of those women, no doubt, are very concerned about what may come out of that vault. And I think it is almost certain that if we had a complete record of Donald's dalliances and his payoffs to keep them quiet, that we would turn up abortions. And that would raise real serious problems with a portion of his base who are absolutely adamant about that issue. I, I just want to be clear. That is speculation on your part, uh, that, that you don't have the um, reporting to substantiate it, that. It, it's at, it, the, no, there are women whose names I know uh, but who are not willing to come well, forward because it would be difficult for right. them. I have no I just want to be clear. That may be true. May uh, you have no, independent I have no independent of that. confirmation, Absolutely. so I have no way to assess that claim. Um, but but right. what what it what is clear here, Natasha, uh, is also that this investigation and this I thought was one of the most important part of the New York Times piece that this part of it isn't done. Right? There was this question of was this all kind of built up to get Michael Cohen and Michael Cohen please and it's over. And what the Times is reporting is no, it's it's ongoing.
Right. And I think that a really smart thing that prosecutors in the Southern District of New York did was they kind of vacuumed up Alan Weisselberg in all of this. So in an effort to kind of get more information about Michael Cohen's role in perhaps committing these campaign finance violations by killing these stories, by paying off the National Enquirer, they actually got the president's longtime uh, CFO of the Trump Organization to get to testify against him. And that is evidence to many people that I speak to that he's going to continue to be useful through throughout this investigation. And of course, Alan Weisselberg, we've all said it before, he knows where all of the bodies are buried. So this is really just beginning also, as long as Weisselberg is in the picture. Also, presumably, Michael Cohen and David Pecker are just hanging out there knowing what's in the vault, which has to, at some level, freak the president out because he wanted to secure and lock that down. And now it is very much not locked down. David K. Johnson and Natasha Bertrand, great to have you both. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.